Hello Indie Game fans, I have quite the selection of titles in this video where variety is the spice of life, with quite the spread across genres and games to cover, so let's dive in. Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout is going free to play with the Free For All update, which feels like an attempt to revive the game after its heyday in 2020, falling from an astonishing 80 plus thousand average concurrent players to about 11,000 as of recording, where developer Mediatonic was acquired by Epic and the PC version will be exclusive to their store, but honestly, this game always felt suited for free to play, so let's see how this does. The god game genre was very popular in the 90s and early 2000s with games like Populous and Black and White, where we might have a little bit of a renaissance with Eden Universe. You have to lead your followers to establish a powerful civilization having an animal avatar as your representation like in black and white, and having some nice pixel art, making this one of interest. I just talked about the SRG Mixtape Volume 2 a little while back, and they've just released Volume 3, a physical release of a collection of awesome indie games, which is something that I adore. One of the wonderful things about indie games is the sheer variety of experiences there are out there, with this release compiling 30 games and 6 demos for you to check out. My personal highlights are Dank Tome, Die in the Dungeon Classic, Pocket and Pick and Tap Tricks, even having bonus features like developer commentary to give you context, with it being limited to just 2,000 copies being made, so get this if you're curious. Courage and will. Politicians spin those two words as if they'd solve anything in war. They are right in that it's all the common soldier has to give. But the rest is up to you and me, Director. I don't really play 4X titles, but an ambitious looking sci-fi entry is the Pegasus Expedition with a fantastic narrated trailer so enjoy. Of that common soldier. We will explore, build, and exploit, because we need power, production, and industry. As courage matters very little, with no guns to back it up. We will gather the greatest minds of mankind to take us to unimaginable heights of technology. All this will create us enemies, but there may be friends too if we play our cards right. Not everyone is satisfied with the old order of the Pegasus Galaxy. And we are well on the way to becoming the new one. So by the Earth, 
and everything our species has ever done. We have the courage, and we have the will. This is my realm. This is my rule. I brought peace to this land. But change is coming. And now, I'm more powerful than they could ever imagine. For the King 2 is a sequel to a popular roguelite RPG releasing in 2023, so do add this to your wishlist. Gone are the heroes of the past. None who remain can oppose me. This is my realm. This is my realm. There's quite the pedigree behind Burnhaus Lane, since this is a dark adventure game from the developer of visually similar titles like The Cat Lady, Downfall and Lorelei, looking to be an excellent and disturbing game that is very much in line with their previous offerings. You play as a nurse who already has one foot in the grave, having to go on a series of tasks in order to get another shot at life, where in the way are all sorts of horrendous monsters with item-based puzzle solving and light combat and platforming elements as well. Especially when it contains a spell so needed. But my tower is far from defenseless. I'm a mage, not an architect. I was attracted to Dwarven Skykeep due to what else than the pixel art, but interestingly, this is a survival tower builder where you play as a wizard, building and expanding a tower as you fend off oncoming enemies. You're on a shady enterprise. I bet other mages will help us. We're all gonna die. You can recruit a whole bunch of dwarves to help with the defenses, with the freeform building element looking pretty neat as well. I didn't think I'd have to walk that much. Good thing I can leave hard stuff to dwarves. We don't have a reason to fight, at least now. I told you it wouldn't end well. I covered the teaser trailer for Four Tales during the Steam Nyx Festival, where this card based narrative RPG looks awesome, but we do have a closer look at the gameplay here. Ballpad made them an offer they couldn't refuse. There's no bargaining with these poor wretches. How about you? It does share elements from games like Magic the Gathering, where your units attack those directly in front of them, where a nice change is that this is not a roguelite deck builder, but rather a linear title. Add to that some gorgeous art and they got my attention, where its release is slated for summer 2022, so perhaps we will get the release soon. What's this? I 
still remember the early access launch day of Temtem back in 2020 where the servers got absolutely hammered and a lot of people had trouble getting in and through the trials and tribulations as well as quite a number of updates through early access, I'm happy to see the progress and to share that it will be releasing in 1.0 later this year. This is essentially the Pokemon MMO game that everyone wants which Nintendo refuses to make but it does have tweaks such as a focus on 2v2 combat and a stamina system for combat rather than being based on the number of charges or PP as in the Pokemon games. Like Fall Guys mentioned earlier, this has quite the drop off in concurring users from 39,000 to 1,000 but a 1.0 release and console versions should bring it to new players. One of the most amazing looking games in development is Melatonin, an adorable rhythm game that is all about dreams and reality. However, unlike the traditional concept of a rhythm game, there does appear to be so much more variety here, almost like the arcade game Bishi Bashi, but in typical rhythm game fashion, I had to change the music due to copyright, but nonetheless, it's still a title that I'm excited about taking the number one spot. For more rhythm games, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.